Today we're going to be learning Psachim Daf Tzadichet. This is the Daf for Shabbat. We're going to start at the mission at the bottom of Tzadi Zayin Amubet. Hamafrish nikeva lepischo ozachar ben shte shanim. Again, we're talking about a korban that gets disqualified. We have someone who separates. From the beginning, this is disqualified. This isn't the case like before where the korban was good and then became disqualified. But from the beginning, it already can't be used for Pesach because it's either a female or it's a har ben shte shanim. It's a male but it's already within its second year, which we already learned can't be used for Korban Pesach. It has to be a male within its first year. So we leave it out to graze until it gets a mum, a blemish. Then once it's blemished, we're allowed to sell it. This is a very tricky line. You sell it and you take the money and you buy with it either a nidava, which is a voluntary offering, or a shlamim, a peace offering. Now, the voluntary offerings where we people would put money into a kupa, like a stucca box in the bed in the bed hamikdash, where there were six stucca boxes meant for this, where the money would be taken by the kohanim and they would use it to buy um, animals to 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 put on the altar as burnt offerings as. It was called the Ketza Mizbeach. We've talked about this a number of times so that the Mizbeach, the altar, won't lie idle. So now it's weird that it would be either Nidava or Shlamim. Many people think this is actually a mistake and that it's either Nidava or Shlamim. The Rambam, Rabbi Nochanan and the Meiri have the version that they go to Nidava, they become for the Ketza Mizbeach. And Rashi and Tosfot say it's actually Shlamim, okay? Because a Pesach that can't be used is generally reverts to a shlamim. Now, normally the Pesach would automatically become a shlamim. Here we have to wait till it gets a blemish and we can only use the money to purchase a shlamim or to purchase a nidava. So we'll see in the Gemara why this is. Again, this goes back to what we saw the other day about it being disqualified. Once something's disqualified, it's called dachoi, in which case you can't reuse that animal. It's different than an animal that we designated and we just never used for the Pesach, but it could have been used for the Pesach. That goes automatically to a shlamim, but if it already became disqualified, it would be an issue. So that's what seems to be the issue here. Hamafrish pischovame. Somebody designates a korban pesach and then the person dies. Lo yivi enu Does his son cannot bring it after him? Okay. Now it seems some people say we're talking about a pesach that has no other people listed as registered for it, and then it's. It's a disqualified offering, and that's why the son also can't use it. Some people say the son can't use it because here the Tosfo Reed says, number one, the son can't use it because it was in the father's name, he says. That's his reason. It's in the father's name, and you can't transfer ownership. It's not like normal inheritance. He inherits whatever his father has. Korban Pesach is for the name of his father. You can't pass that down as an inheritance. The Rashba says the case is where the son is already registered in a different korban, and that's why he can't use this one, okay? And then, again, the issue is, right, so he can't bring it for Pesach because he doesn't need a Pesach, so what does he do with it? It's used as a korban shlamim. Again, this would have to be that there aren't other people registered on this korban because otherwise they're obviously going to sacrifice it as their korban Pesach. Amar of Huna Bered Rav Yoshua. So now Rav Huna says in the name of Rav Yoshua, Shema Minatlat. We can infer three things from this Mishnah. What are they? Shema Minah Ba'alei Chaim Nidchim. We see that this law of Dichoi applies also for live animals. There's a debate about this. Okay, it's not so clear. Rashi brings up this debate. It comes in, up in Yom Adaf Samach Gimel. <coughs> and Rashi says, in the middle of the Rashi, Shema Minah Ba'alei Chaim Nidchim. He says, Udelo Kerabi Shimon Da'amal. Excuse me. He says, or not nidchim. They're not pushed off if they're alive. What do you see about a blemished animal? There's two types of blemishes: one that doesn't go away, and one that goes away. And one that goes away, the animal is worthy once the mum goes away. So from here you see that a blemished animal, live animals aren't considered nidche. But our Mishnah obviously doesn't hold that way. That's the first thing he infers. The second thing is, You might have thought that Dichoy only works in a case where the animal was good, like the case we saw already, where you separated an animal and then the animal got lost and then you brought a different animal in its stead. So the animal was kind of pushed off, you plan not to use it. That's Dichoy, okay? But, um, but if you have an animal 
that is um that is that from the beginning was never that was never able to be used like this one it was a nikeva it was totally the wrong animal you might have thought in order to be the hoy it has to be sanctified fully and then rejected this one was rejected from the start maybe it's not the hoy well from here we see it is third thing okay now Another thing about this, since from the gecko, it was already a problem. That means it never had Kedushat HaGuf because you didn't, now remember, there's a difference between Kedushat HaGuf if the animal becomes sanctified or just the value of the animal becomes sanctified. In this case, we say since you'd separated a female or a two-year-old animal for a Korban Pesach, that's not valid. So that means you've sanctified some people, you've only sanctified the value of this animal, not the animal itself. And yet, what do we see? it's still considered dachoi. So from there you learn, yesh dachoi b'damim. Even an animal that's only sanctified for its value can also be considered rejected. Hamafrish pischo. So now we're going to talk about the second case, about the one who separates his Pesach and then dies. Tano Rabbanam. We're going to bring it to Sefta. Hamafrish et pischo v'amet. So again, the same case. You then separate your Pesach and then you die. If the son has already been registered on the same animal, then of course he could bring it for Pesach. But if he's not registered for it, he then uses it as a korban shlamim, as we saw in our Mishnah. But now they tell you, you can't bring it that day and you can't bring it the next day. You have to wait till the 16th of the month. We're starting on your Dalit when you bring the Pesach. Sorry, so from here you see the 16th, yes, but not, we call it Tet Zayin, but they call it Yud Vav, and Tet Vav Lo, but not for the 15th. Why? It now becomes a voluntary offering, and voluntary offerings are not brought on Yom Tov. Now, there's a debate about this issue, and that's why they specifically say the person who authored this Tosefta clearly holds that Nidarim and Nidavot cannot be brought on Yom Tov, and that's why you can't bring them on the 15th. Now they say, Demita Avimat, when did the father die? Now the assumption is that people didn't designate their Korban Pesach the day before or two days before. So the assumption is this animal was designated on the 14th. The question is, when on the 14th? And now we're going to have a question with both options. If he died before midday, how could the son then bring it? Isn't the son? The son is an onain. An onain is someone whose parent died that day, I don't know, one of their close relatives. They can't do mitzvot. How could he possibly bring the Korban Pesach? And if you say, if it was after chatzot, if the son wasn't mimuneh, then he brings it as a Korban Shlamim. How could you say that? Chatzot already came and said, wait, time for Korban Pesach. This is Korban Pesach. Now the owner dies. That's classic dichoy. It's rejected. So how could you possibly do it? So we're going to have a number of different answers. Amar says here Rava, but the note says it should say Rava. La'olam demit kodem chatzot. Really, it is l'shem before chatzot. Our problem was, isn't he an onem? So ma'ivien l'shem Pesach, l'shem Pesach sheni. It means he brings it for Pesach sheni, and that resolves both issues. It's before chatzot, then it's not dachoy because Chatzot didn't come and say, oh, this is now for Korban Pesach and now it's rejected. And it resolves the Aninu problem because we didn't mean use it for Pesach uh, Rishon, we meant use it next month. You're obviously exempt from Pesach this year because you're an Onin. Although we did see that the Onin does bring it. So a little bit tricky. Um, I wonder, I didn't see if anyone addresses that, but I just realized now that that's a bit of an issue. Uh, let me just check. Right, I just want to see if Rashi says anything. Uh, okay, I'm looking too quickly now. Maybe maybe someone addresses it. Anyway, it's a question. Abai says, read this. Each part, because we had a problem with each part. If you say before chatzot, one part's problem. If you say after chatzot, the other part's a problem. Well, read each one in a different case. Mate achar chatzot. If you died, he died after chatzot and beno mimuneimo. Well, then you be any lishum pesach because it didn't get rejected. It has the son is already registered. He can bring it as a korban pesach. 
מת קודם חצות, but if he dies before חצות, אין בנו ממונה אימו, and his son is not registered, יביא אינו לשום שלמים. Then he'll bring it as a שלמים. And then again, when's he going to bring it? On Tet Zion, on Tet Zion, right? The, six, the 16th, which already he won't be an Onin anymore. And, and the issue is that if he dies before Chatzot, then there's no Dichoy. It's not rejected from being a sacrifice. Rav Shrev Yamal, third answer. We're going to have five answers. Lo lam demi la'achar Chatzot. Now, really, both are the same case. And, and by the way, according to Abai, you'd have to say it's not addressing the other two cases because there's two parameters. And right, there's before Chatzot, after Chatzot, and there's the sun is mimune and the sun is not mimune. So there's four parameters, right? Two in each case. And this only talks about one with one and one with the other. Rav Shrevia says, Really, he died after Chatzot. But his father was already dying at Chatzot. Okay, so how does this resolve the issue? It's because, according to this, we're going to say, says there, Shaya Aviv goses besuk, um, Shaya Aviv goses bechatzot in Rashi, umet lachar chatzot b'no nimne imo, yivienu l'shem Pesach, daha chala lechiyuvi de Pesach b'reisha. Okay, so now, if he dies before chatzot and the father's dying and the son is nimne imo, so then he brings up l'shem Pesach. That's easy. Now, ain b'no nimne imo, then he brings up l'shem shlamim. Why? Because chatzot haya goses. Right, now, again, he dies at, sorry, maybe I said it wrong. He dies after midday. Now, if the father was Gosses and he was on his deathbed, we say that Rov Gosesim Limita, most people who are Gosses are going to die. Therefore, Lo Kivate Chatzot. Therefore, Chatzot didn't determine anything, okay? Chatzot wasn't, normally Chatzot, it goes Pesach. And then if it's messed up, well, then you're messed up and it's Dachoy. In this case, since he was Gosses and he was about to die, nothing was really considered that as if it didn't matter. Chatzot came and went. It didn't say, oh, this is for Pesach because we knew there was a big question on it. Right? It's like when you know that something may or might not happen, so you don't really assume it's happening. So likewise, that's what he's going to say here. Okay, now, it is after Chatzot. Now, Rabbi Shimon, he says, ah, it can go to be a shlamim because we hold like Rabbi Shimon. This Tosefta holds like Rabbi Shimon. The Baalei Chayim live animals don't ever be considered nidche. They don't get pushed off, right? Rejected, which means that you can use it for a shlamim even though already the time of Chatzot hit. Theoretically, it should have made it a Pesach, which then would have disqualified it. It doesn't become disqualified or rejected because there's no such thing by live animals. Ravina Amar Kigon Shifli Show Achar Chatzot. He says, no, you, we really did it after Chatzot. And now, what's the difference here? You only designated the animal after Chatzot. Okay, before we were discussing, did the father die before Chatzot or after? We assumed he separated it in the morning. Now they're going to say, according to Ravina, he separated it in the afternoon. And why is that a relevant point? Because he says, And then the owner died after Chatzot. And the author of this Tosefta held, that chatzot is the time that creates this issue of it's rejected at the moment of chatzot. In this case, right, which is the exact moment that you're obligated in the Korban Pesach. If the, the animal wasn't even separated at that point and it gets separated later and then the, the owners die, that's not relevant. You don't, there's no rejection going on because the rejection happens at 12 o'clock on the dot or right, whatever chatzot is. Remember, it's sha'ot zmaniot, the relative hours. Anyway, that's what he says, and that's how he explains. So we saw five different interpretations to answer this question. New Mishnah. We now have a Pesach that gets mixed up with other sacrifices. Um, actually, there was something else I wanted to mention. Um, 
Right. There's a question about Aninut and this whole issue of Aninut and whether you're really in Onain or not. And Rabbeinu Hananel claims that you're actually not in Onain because if the father died after Chatzot, it's already a holiday. And then you're no longer in Onain anymore. Okay, this he says earlier on the on the question. He says it's possible that you're not even considered an Onain because Aninut doesn't apply when there's a holiday. So that's just a, an aside that I forgot to mention. Okay, Mishnah. If you have Pesach, it gets mixed up with other animals, and now we don't know which is which. So what do you do? You have to leave them all to graze until they get a moon, because we don't know which is which. And then what do you do with the money that you get? So you buy new animals in their stead to replace the sacrifices that you were missing. But there's one caveat. Let's say one animal was worth 100 shekels and another animal was worth 90 shekels. Another animal was worth 80 shekels. You have to know, you don't know which one was which. So you have to take 300 shekels, buy three animals that are worth 100 shekels and basically take a loss. That's what it means. The motar comes from your house, from your pocket. If it gets mixed up with Bechorot, now what's the deal with the Bechor? The Bechor animal goes to the Kohen. The Kohen has to sacrifice it. However, if it gets a blemish, then the Kohen's allowed to eat it without sacrificing it, right? He just has to have it slaughtered. So let's say it mixes up with Bechorot. If it's a group of Kohenim, then they can eat it, okay? Because it's a Bechor basically, right? So then, right, so... Rashi says, by the way, and they don't need to uh, right. Sorry, he means here, this case, we're actually talking about before it gets blemished. If you have Bechor and Kohen, they have basically all the same rules. The issue with the others is there's different rules for each korban. So you can't sacrifice it and say it's either this or that because all the rules are different. And we're going to talk about that more in the Gemara. But if the rules are the same, like Bechor and Kohen, in terms of sacrificing, how many days you can, well, the truth is how many days you can eat is a little different. We're going to get to that. But in terms of putting the blood on the altar, it's the same. In terms of they don't need you to wave the chazan and the shok. They don't need smicha. They don't have nisachim. So you can basically bring them and say it's either a Bechor or it's a Pesach. But it's only if the group of people that are registered for it, the Korban Pesach were all Kohanim because the meat of the Bechor can only be eaten by a Kohen, not by anybody else. So now the Gemara asks, and this is something that I said, there is one big difference between them. And what's that? That you're now going to take, the Bechor can be eaten for two days and the night in between. The Korban Pesach has to be eaten that night, right? Some people say even until midnight and not even the whole night. So you're now taking sanctified items. And you're basically limiting the amount of time you can eat it, which might cause them then to become disqualified earlier, which will make us have to burn them early. And we don't like to do that kind of thing. So they say, well, Rabbi Shimon, the time this was Rabbi Shimon. And Rabbi Shimon holds like he normally holds, which is, he doesn't have an issue with this. How do we know this? It says in the Mishnah. The following Mishnah says, if you get a, have a Korban Hashem, a guilt offering, that gets mixed up with a peace offering, Rabbi Shimon Omer, Yishachatu B'Tzafon. Okay, Asham has to be slaughtered in the north. The Shlamim can be slaughtered anywhere on the Azara. So now they say, well, you have to do it in the north in case it's an Asham. V'yochlu Kechomeshebehen. Now the Asham has all sorts of rules about eating it. Only the Kohanim can eat the meat, male Kohanim, only for a day and a, the, that day and the night. And the Shlamim can be eaten by anybody and it can be eaten for two days and the night in between. So he basically says, that's fine. We go by the asham. He doesn't care that we're taking the shlamim and limiting how long you can eat it for. They say to him, how could you say that? But that's what he holds. So our, our Mishnah must match his opinion. So now it's very nice. Our Mishnah tells us, what do you do if you mix a Bechor with a Pesach? Say you can sacrifice it. It's fine because the details are the same. But that's only Rabbi Shimon because not all the details are the same and the rabbis would have an issue with that. So what do they? What would they do? Amar Rabbah, 
You wait until they all become blemished. You buy a nice fat animal with the money. So you take the money, you sell it, those animals. And then you take the money of the biggest animal and you say, I'm taking this money and I'm putting it into a Korban Pesach. Okay, the, the Kedusha of that Korban Pesach that was there, that now is a blemish, it can't be used as a Korban Pesach, I'm going to take that money and I'm going to now spend it on a new Korban Pesach and the Kedusha will move over to there. And then the other ones, you can now eat because you've removed the sanctity on one of them as if that's the Pesach. And then the others can be eaten like a Bechor Ba'amum. So you can just slaughter them because they already are blemished and then you slaughter them and you're fine. Okay. Mishnah. In other words, right, the big difference between them is that the rabbis say you have to wait until it gets blemished because it's problematic. Whereas Rabbi Shimon says, no, you can actually sacrifice these the way they're normally sacrificed. It's not a problem because he doesn't, he's not worried about the fact that you're limiting how much the, the Bechor can be eaten. New mission. If you have a group of people that lost their Korban Pesach, and then what did they say? Well, now they split up a little bit. They said to one, say, we're going to have a whole bunch of different cases here from here till the end of the daf is just a Mishnah. Go find an, our animal, okay, go look for it and sacrifice for us. And they found, he found the animal and he slaughtered it. But at the same time, they also went and slaughtered an animal. So now the question is, who was slaughtered first? And what if we don't know which one was slaughtered first? Now, since they appointed him to be their messenger, to slaughter for them the original Korban Pesach. So if his was slaughtered first, he eats from the one he slaughtered. And they eat along with him, even though they slaughtered their own. They eat with him because his was the first. So his counted, theirs didn't, because they were already fulfilled their obligation. But if theirs was first, well, now it's a little bit tricky. Because they did it for their own purpose. But he never said, if you don't, right, if you go slaughter your own, I want to be with you too. They were together on the original one, but they weren't together on this one. So so he eats from his own, the one he found, the original one. What happens if we don't know? If we don't know which one was first, oh, they both slaughtered at the exact same time. So he eats his own because he slaughtered his own for sure, for his own sake. He was never involved in theirs at all. But they can't eat him. They can't eat with him because maybe theirs was first, in which case they weren't part of that second one because they already fulfilled their obligation. However, they can't eat the second one because maybe his was already first and then they were already out say with his. So basically their animal has nobody who can eat it. So that one has to be burnt because it's disqualified, but they fulfill their obligation because either when they slaughtered theirs, they did, or when they slaughtered, when he slaughtered his, and they, we just don't know which one, but they clearly were, were Yotze. And therefore, they're exempt from Pesach Sheni. Next case, Amar Lahem, what if he said to them, in Icharti, now this is the reverse. I'm going to go look for the animal. If I come late and you don't, See me come. So include me in yours. But notice they didn't say include me. If you find it, include me in what you find. So therefore, it's going to be the reverse. So he went and he found it and he slaughtered it. And they bought a new animal and they slaughtered it. If theirs was slaughtered first, they eat from theirs and he eats with them because he said include me in yours. If his was slaughtered first, but remember, they didn't ask him to include them. So therefore, they eat from theirs because they did their own. Okay, in this case, right, they split. If we don't know which was first, or both of them slaughtered at the same time, they can eat from theirs because they never asked him to do it for them. But he can't eat with them because we don't know which one was thought of first. Maybe not his. And therefore, it's the reverse. He's also exempt from Pesach Shini. Third case. If he said to them, and they said to him, everyone said, make me your messenger if you find it. You said, make me your messenger if you find it. 
Then everyone eats from the first. If we don't know which one was done first, then they both have to be burnt in the Beit HaSreifa. Lo amar lahem, lo amru lo. Let's say he just went to look for the animal and they went and bought their own animal and they had nothing to do with each other after, even though they were together before. So they have no responsibility one toward the other. Now a new case. We have shte We have two groups and their Pesachs got mixed up and we don't know who's this who's. Now remember, the Pesach can only be eaten for people registered. Okay, what happens? We take, now the issue is that the Pesach has to be eaten for people who are registered. You have to have someone registered on it. If you lose all the people registered on your carbon, your carbon is disqualified. So now if our Pesach's mixed up and we have two groups, what's the best thing to do? Take one person from my group, they go into your group, and one person from your group comes into my group. Okay, each one grabs someone from the other group. Okay, sorry, I, I explained it wrong. means each one takes an animal. There's two animals, we don't know what, right? There's group A, group B, and there's animal C and animal D. So A takes C and B takes D, and then A takes someone from group B and B takes someone from group A, and then they say that's and this is what they say. This Pesach is ours, right? Group A says, right? Your korban is no longer, you're not part of that group anymore. And you can join our group now and you eat with us. But But if this Pesach that we're eating right now is your korban, then we're going to go join your korban because if you remember, you have to be registered before, but you can switch around. So basically, they're going to say, right, we're going to switch to your group. The chen. Likewise, let's say you have five groups of five people or 10 groups of 10 people. So we're going to basically take one person of each group, right, and put them into each of the other groups. Okay, it works the same. You got to wonder why the Gemara specifically told you this case. You wouldn't have figured out otherwise. I don't know. Um, so each one takes someone from the other. Okay, and they say the same thing as before. Another case. What if you, though, only have two people? Now you're stuck. Because if we have two people and I take you into my group and you take me into your group, at some point you're going to end up with a Pesach that doesn't have anybody registered on it. Because when I pull you into my group, you're leaving your group and there's nobody left. So what do you obviously do? Okay, so each one takes an animal, right? A takes B, A takes C, B takes D. Now, each one brings another person from the Shuk to join their, right, from the marketplace to join their Pesach. And then, each one goes to the other, okay? At this point, at least they're leaving someone in charge of their Pesach, so the Pesach's never left without an owner. And then, this is what they say, if this one's mine, right? If this one is mine, then you're going to now join me with my group, and now it's going to be A and C are together eating Korban B, and now E from the Shuk is the one who's eating Korban Korban, what was it? Um, D, okay? Ve, um, na, 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 na. Ve im shalcha u Pesach zeh, but if this one is yours, ya da'i meshuchot mishalib, and neti al shalcha, then I'm joining yours, okay? And then you're going to have, you'll end up with three people eating one, right? And then there's only one person eating the other, okay? And then you're going to do the same thing in the reverse case and say, right? Or that actually, once you already say that, you've resolved everything, Okay. And that's the end for today. We'll start with the Brighta at the bottom of the dach on Sunday. Shavuot Tov or Shabbat Shalom to everybody.